I'm Teresa from Phoenix Gate Crafts and today I wanted to just give some somewhat random advice for anyone who wants to knit socks. Now this advice isn't truly random, it's just a lot of different pieces of advice that cover a bunch of different general topics and answer several different questions. So let's get started. So when making socks, the first thing you want to be careful of is yarn fiber content. And I actually made another video about that that I will link in the description box. In fact, everything I mentioned is going to be linked in the description box if I have links for them. Uh, the next thing you want to do when you're making socks is choose your needles which I also coincidentally have another video that I already filmed linked in the description box. Um, because those two things really determine a lot about your socks and what happens next with your socks. So the next thing is to pick a pattern. And this is easy, you go to Ravelry, you can do a Google search, um, most people have a preferred pattern. For example, um, I have a tendency of doing a uh, cuff down lately. Sometimes it's two at a time, toe up. In that case, I do a Turkish cast on with a wedge toe. Um, but the rest is pretty much the same because I do a two by two ribbing across the top of the foot and up the entire leg. Um, I usually do ankle socks, I do an FLK heel, and I do stockinette on the bottom of the foot. And if I'm doing cuff down, I will do the rounded toe from the Rose City Rollers pattern. So everybody's got kind of their mismatch of, um, things that they like to do for their socks that makes them fit perfectly for them. Uh, once you get some experience in knitting socks, you'll pretty much have your preferred pattern figured out. And don't worry about that. Just try some things, try some other things. You'll eventually find what you like and you'll create your own pattern that you'll be able to do without having to actually have a pattern. A question that comes up a lot is if a pattern is written cuff down, can I do it toe up? The answer is yes. Just be careful because certain patterns, when you turn them upside down, will look upside down or backwards. Got to be careful of that one too. Um, another frequent question is if I've got a pattern that's written for DPNs, can I do it on Magic Loop? Yes, it'll just take a little bit more um, counting. Just realize that uh, usually needles one and two are your needle one and their needles three and four are your needle two. Um, same thing goes for if you're working on nine inch circulars and the pattern is for DPNs. You'll just wanna know which section is for which needle and you might wanna put a stitch marker in your work to indicate that. No big deal. You might have to do a little bit more counting or a little bit different counting, but just because a pattern is written for one method doesn't mean you have to use that method. Yarn, needles, and knitting method are all suggestions. You can always do whatever you want. It's your pattern that you've purchased or downloaded. You can do whatever you want to your own garment. Another frequently asked question is can I knit socks using worsted weight? Yes, the big thing with sock yarn of any size is that you want to knit on a smaller gauge than the yarn recommends. I still, even on you know DK worsted weight or anything big like that, that you still get a very sturdy fabric that it's still mostly wool and it still has some kind of a nylon or something in it. It can be nylon, polyamide, um, mohair, or silk. 
uh, for sturdiness, but it doesn't matter how thick your yarn is, you're still going to want to use a needle um, that's smaller than you usually use. So for example, in fingering weight yarn, I use a US 1, some people use a US 0, and some people use a US 2. It really depends on how tightly you knit. Um, if you're doing worsted weight, which is size 4 medium weight yarn, you'll want to use probably a roundabouts of a US 5, um, give or take a size. So that way, your stitches are going to be denser. And that's what you want because smaller stitches that um, kind of rely on the other stitches more where there's less space and less chance for them to friction against each other, so to speak, the less likely you are to have felting, the less likely you are to have shrinkage, the less likely you are to have wear and tear. And you'll really, just by getting a tighter, firmer gauge by having smaller needles than usual, um, you're going to actually prolong the lives of your socks potentially by years. So be really careful of that. Um, if you're doing fingering weight socks, um, most gauges, they recommend at least eight stitches per inch. And if you've got somebody who really wears through their socks, make sure you've got 10 to 12 stitches per inch. Row gauge still doesn't matter so much. It pretty much never does, but the stitch gauge is what's very important. How many stitches should I cast on? It really depends. The most accurate answer is do a gauge swatch and then multiply by 10% less than the size of your foot. Um, yeah, we're never getting away from that math stuff. Um, there is an easier way to do this though. Um, most women's feet are about nine to nine and a half inches around the circumference of the ball of their foot and around their ankle. Uh, that being said, you can cast on 64 stitches in fingering weight yarn for most women's socks and about 48 stitches for worsted weight women's socks and be pretty secure in the fact that it's going to fit. Um, most men's feet are about 10 to 10 and a half inches around the ball of their foot. Uh, so for them, you can usually be feel safe in casting on 72 stitches uh, in fingering weight and um, I am mathing 30 plus 15 plus 15 is 60 stitches in um, worsted weight. I usually do that on DPN so I had to math. I don't know why 48 was so easy but 60 was hard. So that, that's just kind of general what you want to do. Another thing you want to make sure you're doing is making sure that your sock has negative ease for a couple of reasons. So first, what's negative ease? So negative ease is when something is slightly smaller than what it's supposed to fit. It is the size it's supposed to be minus a little bit, therefore it's negative. Um, you want socks to be negative ease because you want them to stretch over the foot a little bit. One, they tend to fit better. Two, they're less likely to shift. Three, they're less likely to wear out. And four, they look better. Who really cares about that last one, but it's there. Um, as a result of this, because you want them to fit properly, you don't want a baggy toe. You want the heel to fit right in the heel of the sock perfectly. Um, you don't want it bagging around the ankle or anything like that. You want it to fit tightly. And that's what negative ease allows it to do. Um, you don't need very much negative ease. Typically the advice is 10% negative ease. So you take your measurement, multiply it by 0.9, and that's how big you need to make your sock if you're going by specific measurements. However, 
I find it easier math just to subtract about a half an inch and you'll be fine. Um, if you're not sure how long a foot to make, um, stencil that person's foot. Just draw a line around their feet and from there you can measure the length of their foot. Make sure that they're standing because when we stand and we press, our feet spread. We get a more accurate measurement. So even if they're not standing, have them put weight on their feet when you're taking measurements. Just a quick tip on that. Um, but if you get a, a piece of paper and you trace their foot, you're able to tell where their toes are. You put a little dot um, between their thumb toe and their pointer toe um, so that you know how deep their toes go. You have the shape of their foot. You're able to measure the length. You're able to um, put a little dot where their ankle bones are which helps with a lot of different measurements. When you get to that ankle bone measurements, you definitely need to start the heel. Um, you can get a lot just from that cutout, not to mention you can hold up your sock to your tracing and you'll be able to tell how much you still have to go in your knitting. Very handy. Um, some other stuff. There is sometimes concern about knitted socks wearing out very quickly. So I have questions for you if you notice that somebody is wearing a lot of holes in their socks really fast. One, are they wearing the socks without shoes or slippers on carpet? Because that will wear them out crazy fast. Don't let them do that. Uh, homemade socks should always be worn in shoes or slippers or on like wooden floors where when you scuff you're not going to create as much friction. Also be careful if you are on wooden floors, tile floors, laminate, whatever. You got yourself on a slick surface with socks that don't have some kind of a grip on the bottom, you're probably going to fall on your butt at some point. So be careful, don't do that. Um, I'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, second question is, do you have a strengthener in your fiber content? Again, you should have some kind of wool being a good uh, 70 to 75 percent of the content. You should have some kind of a strengthener, be it nylon, polyamide, mohair, or silk to add strength. Um, if you need to, you can double up on your yarn, creating a thicker fabric because a thicker, denser fabric um, on heels and toes uh, actually brings longevity to your socks. And where are they wearing out? Because it might be the shoes. If you have improperly fitting shoes, one of two things happens. One, if your shoes are too tight, they'll pinch and grab. And as your foot moves, it will be forcing the sock to move in the shoe and creating far too much friction, usually in one spot, thereby um, causing a hole in that location. You can usually tell it's this situation because the holes are in weird spots like the top of the foot. Um, or the shoes might be too loose, in which case you're most likely going to find a hole in the uh, back of the heel where because your foot is sliding in and out of your shoe with every step. There is a proper way to fit your shoes to your feet. I've said it before, but I'll say it again. You need to make sure that you've got a sideways thumb amount of space at your toe and you need to be able to stick a finger right down into the side of your shoe. Let me demonstrate. All right, here is my shoe and my sexy sexy leg. So if you'll notice, I can touch my toe and you'll see right before I get to the tip of my toe, right here 
is the edge of my toe. You'll notice that I have a little bit of space between the edge of my toe and the tip of my shoe. That's exactly what I want to happen. You, when you stand up, you shouldn't feel that your toes are jamming into the front of your shoe. Also, if you look down the side of my shoe, and yes, these are socks that I made. Um, this is Critical Sheep in their D4 fingering weight yarn in colorway Ambush. And look at that, I can easily fit my finger, my thumb into the side of my shoe. Doesn't even matter if you do it on the inside or the outside. I can shove it pretty much anywhere. Ooh, my ankle popped. And it's comfortable. That means that when my foot exercises, uh, just by me being on my feet, walking around, if I chose to run, or it, I live in Northern California, we have 110 degree days, my, um, my feet get hot, my feet get sweaty. When my feet get hot and sweaty, they swell. Um, and they take up more space in my shoe than I think. So if I leave a good amount of comfortable space, I know that my feet won't lose circulation when they swell a little bit in the heat. And because I left so much space in my shoe for thumbs, the thickness of my sock is perfectly fine and fits no problem. In fact, I can wear worsted weight socks in these shoes. And as for the last random question that I could think of, what do I use to make my socks non-slip? Well, there's a couple different options. You can purchase a sole, uh, like from some yarn stores sell them, um, like Joanne Fabrics or someplace where they do a lot of crafts, sells them sometimes. Um, you can probably buy them on Amazon. I'm not sure, I've never purchased them myself. But you can find the soles for shoes and you can knit or crochet the tops. Um, another option is to take a glue gun and glue gun little um, droplets, little beads onto the bottom of your sock. The problem with this though is that hot glue when it dries is not very squishy. So unless you get those little dots very close together, uh, you're gonna feel them in the bottom of your feet. And it, it honestly feels a lot more like pleats. So it's not my recommendation. What I do recommend, however, is um, purchasing fabric paint, particularly matte finish fabric paint. Because what that does is it does pretty much the same thing that uh, the hot glue gun does. You can do little dots, but they're flatter and you're less likely to feel them through the sock. The sock should cushion enough, not to mention fabric paints a little bit, um, it's not softer, but it's got a little bit more of a squish to it when it dries. It's usually acrylic um, and it, it, you know, you can fold it a little bit easier because it's supposed to be on fabric. So, There's that niceness to it. It doesn't cost very much usually, just a few dollars per bottle, and you can get it in colors. So if you're actually a very artsy person, what you can do is you can figure out how to use those um, pointy tips that's on them, and you can actually draw like hearts or stars or happy faces or uh, any other little design that you want on the bottom of your socks. You can even, um, do what I did one time. Um, I didn't do this very well, and this will definitely take practice, but you can um, drop certain colors around and then you can kind of smear them together, creating a little bit more of a sole for your sock. Um, and the cool thing is, it's machine washable. <laughs> Go figure, stuff made for clothes. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful. I 
Hope that uh, this answers most of your questions. If you have any more, drop them in the comment box down below. And the next time I check on my videos, I will answer some of those questions. Um, happy crafting and good luck. Bye.